This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Tech, show number 157, recorded on March 6th, 2014. Here at Home Tech, we cover all your favorite tech gadgets and find them right into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy Entertainment Studios. We're back two weeks ago. We were at the Gallup Studios, burning those in. And we are back at the Average Guy TV Studios here in Bellevue, Nebraska. And we post the show with world class show notes each week out at the Average Guy TV. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, you can contact the show, send me an email. Send that to Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. You can find me very easily on Twitter at TheAverageGuy. I'm sorry, and that's not the one to use, at Jay Collison. Or you can use that, TheAverageGuyTV, if you want. But now you can even call in those questions. And tonight we have two of those call-ins that we'll play for you. So you can call in those questions, 402-478-8450. I'll put that in the show notes as well if you want to go back and get that. And we will play your questions or comments. Tonight nah, doesn't necessarily have a question associated with them. Just a comment on a past show, you can call those in as well. And now Home Tech is a part of the Geeks Network. You can find links to shows like this and many other great podcasts all out at the Geeks, the Geeks Network. It is just thegeeksnetwork.com. Although Dave is still working on that site. So if you go out there, it's still a little, a little plain at the moment. Dave, let's get that site fixed. All right. Join us in chat. You can uh, you can join us in chat, listen, uh, watch, or listen to the show, uh, all the navigation for it. We do have a live two option available for you as well in the upper right hand corner, out at theaverageguy.tv. All right, we got a good show for you tonight. Looking forward to it. A brand new uh, we got a brand new guest as well as one returning, and I'm excited about some of the content that we have for you uh, this evening. And so let's uh, get right to it. I want to introduce you to Bill Rockhold. Uh, Bill has been around the community for a long time. I think. Uh, well, many of you might know him from the various uh, just piping in or from the forums uh, that he's in. But Bill, welcome to the show. Good to have you. Well, thank you. Great to be here. You bet. Did you start listening to to a home server show first or home tech? A home server. Yeah, of course. It's been. <laughs> and uh, and are you out? Do you, do you spend much time in the home server show forums? Uh, I check I check it at least once a day. Okay. Um, I don't post a lot, but. Uh, I tried not to be just one of those, uh, yeah, me too kind of guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I try to, <laughs> if I have something to say, I will say it. <laughs> Otherwise, I keep quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's a good forum. If people are listening to the show, maybe for the first time, if you go to homeservershow.com slash forums, I think some of the best forums I've ever been a part of, they, they are uh, moderated very well. And right now, they are rocking with the Gen 8 information and a lot of home server stuff. I think we're getting more home server chat over there than we got when the home server was still a product. Uh, and so what do you go by in the forums over there? Uh, Axoid. Okay. All right. Very good. And tell us, since since this is the first time that we've met you, tell us kind of like where you're from and what you do, anything you're comfortable sharing. Uh, okay. Um, from Columbus, Ohio, uh, software developer for uh, Cardinal Health and um, part-time race car driver. Really? <laughs> what, do you, what do you like to race? Uh, it's mostly uh, time trials, uh, autocross, road or, or road race style racing. Okay. I have a so Chevy like, Camaro that I run. Like like cars like that's behind you there. Uh, okay, yeah. So. Okay. Very cool. M but, although mine's a newer, newer generation than that one. What's the fastest you've ever gone? What's what have you clocked? Uh, fastest that I know I've done is 130. Okay. How'd that feel? Um. Uh, it was a little intimidating, especially when it, the um, I was doing uh, realized I was doing 130, and uh, the Corvette in front of me was breaking in the middle of the fastest part of the track because someone had pulled off the course and uh, it basically turned the fastest part of the track into a parking lot. Yeah, I was. Uh, and I'm trying to find out. Okay, where can I go without hitting anybody and totally wrecking my car in the process? Yeah, that is a little scary. I'll, I'll be honest with you. We, uh, back in the 80s when I was stationed in Germany, we were on the Autobahn, and I was in an 88 um, Ford Mustang. And they weren't really built for speed. They looked cool, but they weren't really built for speed. And at about 115, you could feel the back end lift up on that. I mean, I was sitting in the back seat, and you could feel the car to lift. And I'm like, we might want to slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just saying. I'm not sure this car. Now, on the other hand, we rented a Mercedes while we were there one time, and that car 
faster you go, the lower that thing gets to the ground. Mm-hmm. And it was dynamite. But yeah, that kind of speed can be a little intimidating. Yeah, that's that's one thing. I mean, I have a BMW as well, and that's one oh, thing yeah. about them is that they they not only arrow the outside of the car, they arrow the underside of the car too. Right. Yeah, to to get it to hug down, right? So to hold those tires on the uh, on the autobahn, because that's important. You you don't want that car going flying off for sure. So we'll have to uh, get you and Bill Pullman together, and we'll have to do a car tech show. <laughs> and uh, do, do you get much into the tech that's into the cars, or is it pretty much just racing? Are they stripped down? Well, is it stock. Well, most of what I do, it, you strip them down. Um, but uh, yeah, I have an interest in the tech in cars. Just that uh, I, I generally try to keep my cars uh, low on the tech air scale because I've driven cars with, I mean, all the GPS and yeah, yeah. all like iDrive and the BMWs. It, they just it it's too much. I mean, they're they're putting, in my opinion, they're putting too much tech in cars. Mm. Uh, and I mean, they complain about people getting distracted by cell phones, and they put oh five to seven inch displays in these cars, and you expect people not to look at them. Right. Yeah, they're so, getting embedded in there uh, kind of permanently. Now, did the chat room wants to know, did you wreck on that? Uh, on, on the, on the I on have the... not wrecked my car. I've spun it a few times. I've, <laughs> I've, I've taken it off into the grass sideways and things like that. But, uh, no, I've never bent a fender or uh, put any damage on the car, but uh, I've had a few close calls. Yeah, that's – that's another thing in that Mustang. We we got loose. We were coming out of a construction zone, and the guy punched it, and the back end got loose. And that's a weird feeling when you you know the tires are spinning forward, but you are going backwards somehow. And uh, that's the that. And then we ran right into a guardrail and just took the back end completely off the car. So it was. Uh, yeah, I've seen scary. some cars coming off the track that way. But. Yeah, pretty scary indeed. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, Bill, we'll, if uh, if you survive this podcast, we'll try and get you back on for, and and then trying to get his lower third up. And Kyle, you actually don't need to do that. We're scrapping lower third, so you can pop that thing off, is because uh, it just takes up too much real estate on the screen. So, is Kyle Wilcox, and of course we know Kyle is our phone resident phone guy, and actually we've got some mobile phone stuff to talk about tonight. I'm pretty excited about it because my Android kind of crapped out this week and I had to do some things to get it fixed. But Kyle, welcome to the show. Hello. Good to have you. Okay, let's dive right in. Uh, Bill, the reason you're here, the reason we invited you on the show, is to talk a little bit about, we, you did a hands-on review for me, part of the Average Guy Scholarship Fund, so you contacted me. And, and you can do that, by the way. We've got some really good funds. You guys have been very good about using the averageguy.tv slash Amazon to purchase things. And so I've got a little bit of a kitty over there right now at Amazon. And if you want to, if there's something that you wanted to try out, um, we actually have that fact. I'd have to go back and see. We, we ordered a, a component to be able to record digitally off of VCR and move that on so folks could, could rip those or, or get them digitally done. That's one of those products we're going to move around. But like Bill, uh, he contacted me and said, hey, I got this idea. There's this RAV Power File Hub. It's a wireless. It's kind of a wireless everything, Bill. It's an amazing, uh, it's amazing device. As I started looking at your review, I was kind of like wondering, does it have a, does it have a switchblade in it and a screwdriver? <laughs> That's well, not the but... only thing it doesn't have. <laughs> yeah, it's I, there's a lot of stuff in it. Why don't you talk a little bit about it? Well, if you can see, here's the little device itself. I don't know if it's coming over in the monitor very yeah, well. No, you're good. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put your camera in focus so it stays it stays there okay. so we don't lose you. Yeah. Well, it is a little device about the size of a cell phone. Um, all right now I'm using a memory stick to run it. You can also run uh, SD cards in it. And it basically, you turn it on, It uh, once it boots up, it becomes a hotspot. And you can then connect any kind of mobile device, uh, iOS, Android, even PC. Right now the, P- the PC that I'm on is actually hooked onto it at the moment. And you can then... Oh, go in to administer it, or you can also just view files or even from a PC edit files on it as if it's a hard drive, which now is you're, you're it is. Holding, you're holding that thing around like it's not very <laughs> heavy. Well, it's, it's not, not very heavy, it isn't. But it, 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 yeah, I mean, that's a pretty light, and the, the memory, how big of a stick is there? And I assume that's your storage that's on there, right? Yeah. The, the, right now, this is just a 4-gig stick. Okay. I've, I've been running a 128-gig stick with it, 
But uh, if I demo it and uh, pull up the files, I don't want them to see all these movies and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a video file on here, but it's mine that I actually own. So sure. <laughs> so MPAA yeah. can't get mad at me. Point the uh, no, it's okay. Well, you, you're allowed one backup. Point the uh, point the front of it. So it's got some, uh, yeah, it's got some up front. So you've got the USB, and then that other slot is for what? The other slot that is for the SD card slot. Okay, and just a standard SD, or will it take? Yeah, it will take a standard SD card, and then on this side you have a micro USB uh, port, which is for charging, and the power button. Then you just have some mantra lights on the front. And it's got a what, battery in it, right? I mean, it's got yeah. a pretty good battery. Like yeah, a it's three, got a less than like, uh, I'm not pulling, I'm remembering the exact milliamps, but somewhere yeah. around 3,500 yeah. to 4,000 milliamp battery three, in it. Yeah, it's, it's a 3,000. Okay. 3,000 milliamps, which is pretty good. You know, we, we yes, reviewed three, it that. It actually says it on the back now. <laughs> <laughs> We reviewed um, that Power Rocks, um, you know, the the little battery pack that's uh, like a cigarette, you know, or like a cigar length, mm -hmm. and that thing's 2,800 milliamps, and that's a little, it's bigger than that, and so to, for them to get 3,000 milliamps in there, not a bad, not a bad, you know, you could charge your cell phone off of it, right? Give you an idea, this is a yeah. GS3. Yeah, no, good size. Yeah. So um, you talked about uh, sharing a little bit of, of what that looks like in, for the admin on the screen. Are you ready to do a little, uh, try to do Give a little it a shot. See sharing what, and see, see what how we that get happens. here. So, um, and Loft is asking, I assume that takes the, the, uh, the SDHC, the, the, uh, those, the new high capacity cards that go in the... Um, go in the to be screen. honest, I haven't used an SD card in it. Uh, I would believe that pro it will support the newer cards. Okay. Um, yeah, I would think so. So, then, honestly, I I haven't had any anything in an SD card actually in the thing. I've always sure. been using USBs. And the links for all of this will be out at theaverageguy.tv/ht157 if you're listening to this later after it, and uh, including the the review that Bill did and um, the uh, the link to the actual device. Oh, go back to your screen, Bill. Okay. You did well to get the screen up there. Okay, there. Um, here we have, this is the admin screen where you administer the application. You have your administration user, and we have the disks. In this particular one, you're seeing the 4 gig SD card in it. And let's see, network settings, you have host name. It comes up with some uh, all weird encrypted or cryptic name by default. I, I changed it to file up because it just that's easier to or I'll understand when you pull up on the screen of a device and say, oh, there's the file hub. I'm just gonna hit that and see if some cryptic WD S oh, SD whatever it used to be. I can't remember what it was now. Um, here are. Settings and here's my great password, <laughs> <laughs> which you'll change after the evening. Uh, I don't know. I probably oh, okay. won't because I, I wanted to keep it simple enough so that the nine-year-old who uses it most oh, no, remembers and that's it. Just for that's not to get onto your Wi-Fi. That's just the no, Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, this is for connecting to the device. Right. Um, my uh, the connection to my Wi-Fi is on this, and this is where it routes you back to my own home Wi-Fi if it's a here at home. So it, it, you you have a device and you connect to uh, the file hub, it can then reroute you through the file hub back to your home network so, so that you can still browse working. the Internet through your device yeah. while you're uh, accessing uh, the information on it. So, so it kind of repeats the signal for you. Mm-hmm. But uh, they don't uh, advertise router functionality, so couldn't guarantee you that it. I doubt it has any kind of real router or oh, firewall type functionality into it. So right, nor would you want to use it that way. Yep. And I think the browser just crapped out because it's not responding now. <laughs> uh -oh. Just refresh it. See if that uh, see if that brings it back to life. Yep. There we go. There we go. Um. 
We've got services, which basically it only has one service on it. There's, as far as I know, there's no way to download anything else. Maybe they've add, put that in there in case maybe they're going to may do a firmware update sometime in the future, add something else to it. But Bill, when you run that thing, so when you've got something connected to it and you're, and you're maybe streaming a movie to it, does it get pretty warm, the, the device itself? That's been one of the complaints that we've had with some of these kinds of devices is they get really warm. Did, uh, did you notice that at all? No, not with this. Not while it's all uh, just powering itself. Okay. If you, I haven't tried it with like a uh, USB hard drive. That since that would pull more current, that might work it harder. But I mean, this 3,000 amp battery pack will run this for two or more hours. Actually, no, they're running about close to six hours. I don't remember. Yeah, is it and is that USB three that that USB port? Uh, no, it's, I believe okay. it's USB two. USB two, and will it power the hard drive if you if yeah, you? If I have run, I have tested that. I've okay. put a uh, USB hard drive on it, and it would spin up the drive. No, well, there you go. That's why the, the chat room is saying that's why it has a, th- a three thousand milliamp uh, or 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 three amp um, battery in it. I think that's handy to have that battery in there as well. I mean, I, I can't tell you the number of times I needed a quick phone charger, you know, charged to the phone, and it would be if I'm if this is something I was carrying around or I had with me, be nice, nice to have. So I'm just, and this is the last little feature here where it actually will allow you to explore the contents of your uh, drives. Although this isn't how you actually access to play it. This is just viewing it. Now, if I switch to another app I got running on here. That actually showed up pretty well. There it is. And this may be a little slow. And this is an actual Android tablet. And it's streaming the video through a USB cord back to the t- um, computer. Okay, so how are you doing this? How are you showing us this? this well, um, it's in kind of a uh, developer mode, and I found an app that allowed me to start up, and it doesn't work with the GS3 for some reason right now, and I think there's some driver issues. Okay. But I have an old uh, Acer tablet, and I just plugged it in, and it worked right off. And what's and the name of the app? Oh, let me see. Now, you figure you'd ask me this. <laughs> uh, it's okay. If it comes in a second, that's fine, too. But that's pretty cool. Droid at screen. It was some developer came up with this little uh, Java-based app to, to do this. Okay. And it, it's nothing commercial. Just something I happened to find uh, on YouTube and downloaded, and it worked. And mm, Very cool. I had tried several other things, trying to run emulators on my PC to be able to do this, and none of them would do Wi-Fi, so I ended up finding this and went with it. And I need something like that. I'm doing a class, and I'm trying to show some apps that the kids have made, and this would be perfect for that. I might talk to you a little bit about this offline. Okay. Uh, AirStore is the app that you want to uh, use. It's what you can download from the market. And it is trying to connect, and there you see the uh, volume that I, the USB stick that I have on here, and you just open that up, and it takes a second. I'm not sure how this is going to do on video. <laughs> it's probably going to be yeah, horrible. Yeah, it probably won't be great, but we'll, we'll try it anyway, just to see how it goes. And if you open up the thing, it'll ask you which player you want to use. If this kicks you off of a Google Hangout, just call back. <laughs> well, it shouldn't. Well, I'll call you back, yeah. And uh, I have video. Yeah, we see a little bit here. I, I would imagine it's not going to keep up for what we're displaying out. Yeah, I, I think watching, it just. It, I think this app snapshots the screen and uh, feeds the sing, single image across. So I don't think it's streaming the video real time. I think it's just snapshotting it every second or so. Yeah. No, no probably it. would you want it to, you know. Yeah. So okay. no, that's cool though. Okay. Well, I mean, it shows that it works from in 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 from your standpoint. It was streaming video to that device 
when you weren't sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So that was basically uh, Did you most of I mean, there's a bunch of features they have in this uh, app, but uh, I'm, I'm not, I just won't go into all those. Sure. <laughs> Keep this short and sweet. Cause no, the, it's good. Any, but if there's anything interesting in there, we'd love to see it. But it's, it's There really, really isn't. I think the, okay. the key point is, okay, it, it plays the files, and you, have to, you, you can... Um, with a Windows machine, I know you can uh, browse it through Windows Explorer, and you can actually edit and use it and interact with the files just like you would if it was local, just as if you was connected to a share on a, on a server. Sure. Yeah. Um, Android, it at least plays back video in that same um, method way. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if if I tried to store like a Word document or anything like that, whether it would interact with it in the same way. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, do you think, I mean, can you use that as regular storage from a... You might be uh, able to. Uh, so, not something I tested. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I said, the key thing was the, the extend uh, uh, video st uh, storage for my uh, stepdaughter for her trips. And... Oh, that was the whole point of it, and yeah. that's that's what I uh, spent most of my time trying to test. And, and it worked for her. And it has worked for her. Yeah, which means it was fairly easy for her to connect to and then get what she needed and watch mm -hmm. that on the trip, right? And the, the, only, the only oh, thing I found with this is that uh, if you're running, uh, when you charge it, you need at least one amp or more, better uh, charger if you want to charge it and drive the uh, the functionality at the same time. Because if you put it onto a regular USB port, which only puts out half an amp, or you use a half amp charger, it will run and it will extend out the lifespan, but it will still drain the battery internally, and once the internal battery goes down, it just shuts off. Yeah. So did you? does it come with a car um, kit, or did was that something you had to get for it? The card? Or yeah, the no, charger? The, the, the device. Did it... Did it come with a charger that would no. fit no. in the car? It, okay. it came, oh, I mean, when I opened the box, it had a teeny little questionable manual. Yeah. If, you're, if you want to use a manual, go find the one online. It's better than the one they ship in the box. Um, but other than that, it was just the little white bo oh, cube, and that was it. But to be, to be fair, I mean, of all the chargers that I've purchased, battery chargers, I've purchased only one I've ever had that actually was able to be charged without having to supply your own charger, and that's because it had little plugs you plugged into the wall. Right. But everything right. else I've ever bought has always said, oh, you have to use your own chargers to charge it. So. Well, and you said in your post you get you got about six hours of battery life out of it in, under no, kind of normal circumstances. Yeah, I was, uh, hooked it up to a, a laptop that I was running, and I streamed uh, HD video off of it for some like six hours. I... After the first couple a oh, couple of light loops through the movie, I just kind of let it run, and then I came back to it a little over six hours later, and it was dead. So <laughs> that, that's, that was my extent of timing it. Yeah, six hours isn't bad. That's that's not bad. For that little thing, that's not mm -hmm. bad at all. It got well over 12 uh, when I had it on the one amp, uh, half amp charger. Hmm. Uh, we, oh, my stepdaughter was, we was in a hospital for a couple of days, and... Uh, I put it hooked onto uh, a charger, and from eight in the morning till nine at night, it was still running. Yeah, but the next morning when I came in, it was dead. But yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's good. And 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 Kyle, um, you know, you do a lot of uh, there in the in the store that you're in. You sell a lot of chargers, right? This is a this is an area that I don't think a lot of people are aware of when they buy these USB chargers, that there's a difference, right, in the output of a lot of these uh, different chargers? Yeah. Um, I, I lost your volume here, Kyle. Hold on. Let's see. You're, let's, let's see if Google will bring that up for me here. One second. Do you want me to change the studio? Um, yeah, change it back to voice for me. Or is it on? It's on voice. Hmm. I just... You got super quiet. Bill, is he super quiet for you too? Yes, he is. Okay, yeah, you're still loud for me. So, do me a favor, go in there and see if you can amp up your uh, your microphone volume here for me real quick. See if we can get. It. For some reason, I think maybe because you know Google amps it down a little bit when maybe you muted it, but. What about now? That's yeah, still kind of. 
Still kind of quiet. Are you, are you in studio mode or in live or in the uh, the voice mode? Studio right now. I switched it from voice to studio. Yeah, it's from voice to – change it back to voice for me because voice will adapt, studio will not. Okay. So there we go. Is that better? That's a lot better. Okay. okay. Yeah, voice um, will adapt for you. So. Yeah, with um, because we, you know, your your normal old car charger is is just gonna put out like the re like a tiny USB power, but now we have they call them premium chargers, whatever you know. So that has like, it has enough power to charge your ta Android tablet, your phone, and it has an extra USB port on the top too, so you can actually charge one off of the micro USB and then put another cable. It'll charge, you know, your Galaxy S4 and your iPad at the same time. And it's fully powered to give you enough amps to charge. You're supposed to charge it faster too, so that's definitely nicer than the old car chargers that came with your flip phone, you know. And I should be able to tell what what the watt is or what the um, what am I looking for? It's is it volt? No. What's the what's the? Yeah, there's volts and amps, and then there's um and so amps is what I'm looking for though, right? Yes, it is, Bill. Amps. So. Yeah. I should be able to look on the charger and it'll say 0.5 or 1. Does it go above, yeah. does it go above that? 2.1, like, I think, is what uh, iPad chargers are going for, are running at now. For a full charge? For and the, for the chargers that, yeah. that you get for an iPad, especially the new uh, newer models, uh, they will charge, I think, 2.1 amps. Yeah. But they're still running like 5 volts. Okay. Yeah, it's it confuses the crap out of me. I I just plug stuff in. I don't you know I don't know. <laughs> you know it's like okay, is this the right connector? Kunk and uh, and I call it good. I do try to yep. like with the Samsung stuff. I do try to keep the the original stuff I get with it. I try to use those when I can, but they all get mixed up. You know I got a I have a handful of these chargers. Yep. That I, that I have to deal with. So, well, that's good. I'll have to I'll have to look in the future there. So, what should I be for? So, from and we'll talk about this later. But for my Galaxy S4, what should I be? What What's the amperage I should be using on this thing when I charge it? Whatever it Whatever it came. <laughs> whatever with. it came with. <laughs> you're All probably right. good with I don't, one. I don't. Yeah, one I don't. Amp, you're probably good with one amp. Okay. I and I don't think the at this point with I don't I haven't seen any issues with the more using a more powerful charger. Should just charge it faster and not actually damage it, because that's right. I mean like the car yeah, charger I was talking about is more powerful than the one that came in the box, and I use it, so I don't know. I'm not an expert yeah, on that part. Just charges faster. Yeah. Well, what what see what they do is that if you have a, a device that will draw one amp, but you have a two amp charger, it will draw one amp. That but if sense. you have, it, it will draw as much as the device wants to draw. So you're Got you're it. safe in that, and if you have a oh, charger that only puts out half an amp, it will try and take everything that it can get from that charger, which is only half an amp. <laughs> yeah, the chat room is saying now they know what happened to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, this device, so this Rav Power uh, All-in-One uh, Dynamite Gizmo. I think I paid forty-four dollars for that using this this scholarship fund. I don't think it was very expensive at all. No, they're not. Yeah. And no. actually, I had another question on that. Maybe I missed this part, but is that does it have any kind of like an Ethernet so you can like if you're at a hotel you can plug into their wired no Ethernet and go Wi-Fi out? It's not a. It's not gonna. Nope. There, there's no do an, be an oh, access. Wi oh no, wired connector. It's it's Wi-Fi only. It, it comes with a default when you buy it. It has a default setting. Oh, and you just turn it on, and you just have to connect it to it by that particular name, and that's it. That's the only way you can connect to it is through Wi-Fi. Okay. So get it in, set it up, uh, make you know, set up all the stuff so you can connect to it. Then, then you kind of take it off your network. It can connect to your network if you want mm -hmm. to, and then, uh, then just take it with you. Take it on the road, use it in the car. In your case, uh, you were in a remote location, so that, that was a good... Yeah, we've used connection. it in the car, we've used it in the hospital, uh, we've used it in hotels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. You got some good use out of it. Very mm -hmm. cool. And the wife has even charged her iPhone off of it once. Very nice. Did, 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 it, did one charge drain it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't think we... Uh, she, I don't think she put a full charge on her phone on it, but I don't think she ran it dead either. 
does it ran, have a, ran like, the uh, draft power dead. So yeah. does I it think have an LED gave indicator? it a boost to keep it from being completely gone. Does it tell you when it's getting low on power? In a way. Uh, the, the little LEDs blink in a different way okay. depending on its uh, discharge uh, state. Uh, but it's it's one of those cryptic little blink twice, blink three times, whatever, and you, you pretty much have to have the manual out. It's a, okay, it's blinking three times. That means it's at seventy five percent. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's yeah. that that's the one one complaint that I would have about the display is that I wish it had a bar of little LEDs right. to, to tell you its actual charge state versus this little blinking. Yeah. Oh, cryptic way, but again, forty-five dollars. You can you right. can't complain, right? Yeah, like I like this. We've talked about this before, but I got this Power Rocks. You know, this is the Power Rocks Power Cube that I paid forty bucks for, which has been dynamite. You'll get up to four or five charges. Uh, depends on what the device is. I've charged the Lumia with it. I've charged the GS2. I charged the GS4. I. It's been great. It's got an extra charger on the inside. It's got USB and micro in the in the micro. But it's got that nice little, hey, you've got four bars left, and when you use it, it goes down to three, and then it goes down to two, and then it goes down to one. Really nice, good visual graphics to tell you kind of, hey, charge that thing. Yep. And uh, it charges back up in a couple hours, and then I'm back on the road with it. And it, it actually, I wonder what the output is, because it did charge. I put it on my phone, and it charged that thing fast. I mean, it was maybe two hours, and that thing was back up to 100%. So that was, uh, I I've, I've really like this. Power Rocks, you can go back. Again, if you're new to the show, just go to theaverageguy.tv, uh, put in Power Rocks in the search, and you'll see that uh, Carrie Adams was on. We did a review of some of those. We talked about the Power Rocks devices. And, uh, Bill, thanks for doing that. Again, that is all because of the generosity of you guys going out to theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon. And uh, when you make Amazon purchase, we've had some suggestions, you know, if you're if your better half, your significant other, whoever's making the purchases at uh, the house, if they, uh, he, she, or however that works out, is uh, making the purchases, set up a little. But you're the tech guy, right? Set up a little shortcut for them on their browser that goes uh, says Amazon on it, but then it goes to the average guy TV slash Amazon. That will automatically redirect them, and then uh, the show picks up a little bit of credit for that. We turn that back around into what we call the Tech Scholarship Fund, and it allows me to do some things with folks in our community as well when we get opportunities to do that. And um, and so, like I think I, I mentioned early in the show, I'm going to scholarship Kyle a new uh, ATR2100 because he comes on the show about every other month or so, and I want him to have a better mic. So we will do that as well. Well, Bill, thank you for doing that. Be sure to chime in here on the rest of the show anytime you've got something you want to say, okay? Oh, well, trust me. I, can, I don't have no problem talking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sounds good. Kyle, I want to uh, I want to dovetail in a little bit. You're our mobile guy, and uh, and you do work in a mobile Best Buy, uh, one of the one of the key, not the kiosk, but a it's a it's a what do you guys call it? It's a Best Buy mobile specialty store. Spe so. Mobile specialty, and it's where. Yeah. I, I went to a store in here in Omaha when I picked up my S4. I went to a store like yours to, to pick that up. Great experience. It was it was a very good experience. I like buying my phones at Best Buy. I'll be honest with you. I'm not just saying that because you're on the show, but <laughs> I do like I like that experience. I've I've uh, although I just bought one from the Sprint store the other day. That's where my son wanted to go, and we got that done. And we'll talk about some things I learned. But you are saying that some things are changing in the mobile industry, and I really noticed this when I went there. But I want you to talk about it mm -hmm. first. So tell me what you know. Yeah, well, I guess I'm just going to kind of start out at the beginning of all things cell phones. Really, is um, you know, when the when cell phones started, you know, and I don't know how long or, or what point this started, but I know it's the contracts have been going on, you know, at least since my dad's had cell phones, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Um, but basically, you know, no consumers wanted to pay, you know, full price to own a cell phone. And so the carriers would make a deal with you and say, hey, if you sign up for this to your contract, you can get this phone for free or 50 bucks or whatever. And they would subsidize the price of the phone for you. Um, and so, you know, that's the process we've been using for for years and years now. Um, and can you know, the cell phone companies kind of realize that, well, but this isn't cool. We don't want to keep paying for phones like this for people. And consumers kept saying, we want to upgrade our phones faster, you know. Um, and so, really, what they've what they've started doing is they've started separating away the cost of the phone from the cost of your 
plan. Um, and and actually, you know, you you've always been paying for this phone. You know, remember when you would you before you had a smartphone, you'd go into the store and you'd, you'd buy a new phone and, uh, to upgrade to a smartphone, and they'd be like, well, there's an extra thirty dollars or whatever it was to add a smartphone. That's, and they would say it's for the data, you know. And that you know, and yes, technically there would be a line on your bill that said you now have X amount of data, unlimited, two gigabytes, three gigabytes, whatever it was. You have X amount of data, and this is how much it costs you. Well. You know, in reality, I mean, yes, you were in a sense paying for the data, but in reality, mostly that extra fee was paying for the subsidized cost of your smartphone. You paid a hundred bucks for the phone, or whatever you paid for it, and the phone really cost six hundred or something. Um, and so that's how they were, you know, you know, and people would always be like, I don't want to pay for data, and I, I'm sick of this, and I have Wi-Fi, and well, now we've really kind of separated the cost of the phones now. Um, and and so all the cell phone carriers are jumping on board um, on with this, and I don't know how long it's going to be. I mean, if, I, maybe eventually there won't be any more contracts at all. Um, who knows? Um, T-Mobile got rid of contracts completely, so there's there's no more um, there's no more contracts at all for them, um, and they kind of really started pushing. Um, and who knows how really disruptive they've been. You know, you can kind of debate on whether it was actually them or just the industry was going to go that way without them. But Timo really started pushing. So basically now, you know, um, all these commercials, and mainly I would say it's um, it's mostly um, AT&T and Sprint who I think are guilty of this. And they'll advertise a certain monthly rate plan on their um on the TV commercial where AT&T keeps saying, you know, $160 a month for four smartphones and um, Sprint keeps saying $25 a month for up for, you know, up to 10 people on a family plan, a family plan or whatever that is, you know. So and this um, weird tiered pricing now that goes backwards, yeah. right? The more phones you have, the cheaper the mm -hmm. your, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So the the thing that they they don't tell you is that those prices, because for the last, like I said, ten I don't know, ten twenty years, when they quoted you a price and said get this monthly deal on this phone, that included the subsidized cost of your phone. Well, those prices that they're advertising are not don't include your phone. So if you're a family of four and you see a commercial for AT and T for 160 for four smartphones and you walk in to buy that phone, you have you have two options. You can um, you can sign a contract, and then that adds an extra twenty-five dollars a month per phone to your bill. So now you're back up to a hundred extra to two sixty. Or you have the option to finance your phone, and all of them have their different names, whether it's Jump or Next or Edge or Easy Pay, or those are all the different cell phone company names. You can finance your phone. Um, and it's essentially just a credit card through the cell phone company. Basically, you're just paying monthly installments with no interest to them. Um, and so, if you pick a cheaper phone, you might be at 15 bucks a month. But most people are going to pick a smartphone that's going to add 20 to 32 to you know 25 to 30 dollars. So you do that four times, you're right back up to the 260 again. Um, and the same thing with you know people see. The Sprint plan, and they're like 25 bucks a month. I'm gonna get a get the family plan and sign up, and all my buddies, and they'll come in, you know, and say, hey, uh, 25 for each person, 50 dollars. Okay, well, yes, that part's true, but you still have to pay for your phones, um, and all of this, you know, you have the option of, um, you can bring your own phone, you can sign a contract, you can do a financing, um, you can do all your options. Just if you sign a contract, it's, it's gonna add money, it's gonna add costs to your plan. So. Um, that's just kind of, it's just, and I've seen this a ton just where I work is people coming in and they think that the price is one thing and then we have to explain to them, no, it's actually hundreds of dollars more, you know, and, and that's frustrating. I think, um, this, what, there are some good parts to it though and I think, um, this is one where AT&T really has a big advantage I think because, um, that, Based because they use the GSM phones, that's those phones are everywhere in the world, um, and so you you are allowed to bring your own phone, and so uh, if you can get a phone cheaper, you're allowed to use that, um, and and if you're on Sprint or Verizon, those are CDMA phones, and you can't even even if you have another CDMA phone from another country, it still has it has to be a Verizon or Sprint certified one to work on their network. So you have to 
they're you know that yes, Verizon is big and they have and, and they have tons of phones out there and the used market and everything. But you still have to buy an actual Verizon phone and you have still have to buy an actual Sprint phone to use on their network. Um, whereas with AT and T, you have that option of bringing your own phone from anywhere. And so, for years and years, um, AT and T and Verizon have been neck and neck on pricing, um, just just for a long time. But I think that now and and if you do buy your phones directly through them, it's still going to be fairly close. Um, but if you can take advantage of buying, like we've talked about tons of times, like a Lumia uh, 520 or you know any other phone or a Moto X or a Nexus 5 or any phone that's been priced a little bit better, because either you know with these new plans, you're you're paying for the actual amount. Of your phone, so instead of everybody on the account paying 30 bucks a month every single month for data, if you decide to pick a cheaper phone, it's actually going to be cheaper for you. So there is some good news there in that part of it, but um, just the commercials are so deceiving, and it's just it's it's kind of crazy. So yeah, so our experience was we went in. Uh, my son Josh was due his upgrade, and he was like, "Dad's time." You know, he had an old. Uh, HTC, the one that was 3D, that I was probably the only 3D yeah, phone. Yeah, the Evo 3D, yeah. Evo, Evo 3D is what yeah. we picked up a couple years ago, and it was it was pretty cool to watch. You know, there was like one movie <laughs> that was made for it, right? Yep. Uh, I think it was Green Lantern or something like that. And uh, so uh, he had that phone. It was time to upgrade. So we went into the store, and, and, and it was like, what are all these monthly, you know, what are all these mm -hmm. monthly amounts? How does this work? So... They had just Sprint had just changed over to this, and even the sales guys were a little confused on how it all worked. We broke out the brochure and we went through it, and they're like, and "For me, it was all or nothing, right? You change over, and I'm on the old unlimited plan, so add a phone at the subsidized price, pay another ten or twenty dollars for data for each one of those phones. I mean, I'm paying three hundred bucks a month for five phones on my on my plan, so it's not cheap. And in fact, when we looked at switching over to the to that plan. It, Probably way more. Uh, no, it was actually a little bit less for me in that. But here's what I didn't like. The fact that, and I should have just, I'm, I'm, I'm paying for that subsidized phone anyway, right? But it it was like, okay, wait a minute. So he's going to make a down payment, which was super cheap, whatever it was. And then you're going to roll that the subsidized cost into my bill going, you know, from this point going forward. And so what happens when I, my wife and I's phone are up? Then I'm, we're going to have to do that all over again, and that bill is going to grow. I think that's where it starts getting you is like the – it's cheap now It was yep. because I'm just adding one phone to that payment. But as I get into the successive years – now, if we hold on to our phones, and there was a somebody in chat was saying, hey, does anybody not buy their phone or does not tur you know turn their phone in after two years? Most people do. So now Bill's shaking his head. You keep yours. What are you sporting right now, Bill? Oh, I try. I uh, I change them out as quickly as I can. Oh, okay. So you're shaking your head. Yes, I do. I, I don't keep them. <laughs> yeah, most. I don't think most people do. You know, from that standpoint. And so, Kyle, I think that's where it starts getting expensive for me. Is mm -hmm. when then okay, my daughter's phone comes up for renewal. Then my son, and then ours. And the closer those are together, the more, and you add those monthly payments then mm -hmm. for that phone. And I'm like, well, can I just pay for it all at once? Well, no, the system's not really set up to do it that way. You could call in later, and you have to tell the customer service people that that payment is just for the phone. So it is kind of messy. There has been some changes. So if you're on Sprint, you've got some messiness there now. Uh, they allowed me to stay on my current plan, so I didn't have to make the move. To the new did they, so did they make you do and sign up for one of these monthly installments, or were no. you able to just upgrade? I just upgraded. I, okay. Just, just like normal. I kept with my okay. plan. Yeah. I bought a subsidized phone. He paid 150 bucks. You know, I think he got the he got the Nexus 5. And uh, and so he we we got that phone. He paid the 150 bucks for it. I'm yep. paying the subsidy. <laughs> yep. you know, I am. If, but Let's your just, bill. Yeah. yeah, your bill shouldn't change though, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Bill, my, my monthly amount stays the same. So, yeah. So it's, it's, um, you have to be, it's, it's crazy. This business is crazy. You know, back in the 80s, late 80s, uh, early 90s, uh, when, when I was a landline was, you know, it was $69 to have a landline. And, you know, you couldn't just buy a phone and put it on a landline. And, you know, I was getting these bills for $150. I was outraged that I had to pay this much for a telephone, right? 
And I worked that thing down to nothing with voice over IP, zero, right? And you know what I did? I just added a, tr a double payment of that on with cell phones. You know, I, it's like, and I do it willingly. It's kind of crazy what we've worked ourselves into. I would have never have done this in the 80s or 90s for my landline phone. I never would have paid this much. But for whatever reason, I'm willing to just fork over money. Like, I mean, it's a freaking car payment that I make for my, for my, for me. Now, as the kids depart, we are pushing that off onto them. You know, eventually we've had two <laughs> leave and they have their own bills now. Um, uh, but it's, uh, but it'll take a couple more years before the other kids drop off our plan. So very, I think very, very interesting that that's happening. Well, let me, let me, let me tell my story here. So I, if you listen to the home server show, homeservershow.com on Tuesday, I was complaining that my, my, my GS4 had, uh, had, had bricked, not really bricked, but it wasn't charging anymore. And, and it just stopped, and it had come in a moment of an upgrade. And uh, so I, I, the weird thing about it is if I turned the phone off and I plugged it in, it would go through this weird cycle of, hey, you need to charge, I'm going to charge. Hey, you need to charge, I'm going to charge. And the phone would buzz every time it did that, right? Need to charge, I'm charging. Need to charge. Literally, about every three or four seconds, it flipped back and forth. At the end of the night, it would be fully charged. So it worked. Traded out the battery. That didn't help. My wife has a Galaxy S4, too. So I took it into the Sprint store today, and I was just like, hey, guys, can you kind of tell me, I mean, what are my options here? And uh, so the guy's like, well, the tech can take a look at it. I think it's a, a, a part we can replace. And, uh, and I said, um, is, it, you know, is it a warranty item or whatever? And they, were, they said, well, let's look at it. You know? Well, it, I must have set this in something where water made it into the, you know, like in the car or on something or on the counter or something, right? And sure enough, there was water damage. It had shorted out the, the uh, you know, the, the plug that's in there. And uh, he showed it to me, you know, I'm like, well, so what are my options? He's like, I'll just put a new one in there, but it's 75 bucks, you know. Uh, and, I'm in, and I'm in the store and I'm thinking, and I had just been talking to, um, let's see, who was I talking to on the Facebook page? One second here. I want, I want to give some credit where credit is due. Um, oh, John Wills. And John was like, hey, Jim, I had that same problem and I just replaced it for like 25 bucks. Sure enough, on Amazon, there's kits for anywhere from 10 to $25 that you can just change that port out and it comes with all the tools that you need to take your phone apart and change it out. I probably could have done that, but you know what? My phone's fixed. And uh, for me, it's just kind of worth it to get that. Uh, I know, uh, Kyle, you cringed a little bit when I, I said I, I paid to have it fixed. You know, but that being said, it's done, right? I didn't have to send it off. I didn't have to send it to Samsung. I didn't. It did have it did have some water damage, so they would probably would have denied the, you know, a warranty any warranty work on it anyways. But uh, yeah, you're shaking your head, maybe yeah. not. No, I mean if there's if there's if there's actual water damage and you got out for seventy five, I I don't think that's that bad. Yeah. I mean if you had been able to, you know. And, and like, you know, your other options probably, you know, you might have been able to get a warranty replacement for free if you had called to Sprint's customer service, waited on hold, went through their troubleshooting. They, they mail you a phone. You mail the old one back. Or that you do the same thing through Samsung. Both of those people may have been able to do it for free, but either way, you're mailing it. And, and you know, then it's just kind of, yeah. No. Yeah, Ted it's, is it's, saying the Ted's saying the same thing in chat. He says uh, my work phone's a Samsung GS4. Replace yeah. the power module. Yeah, I think that's what did for about fifteen bucks. Yeah. yeah, I found one on Amazon for fifteen, twenty bucks, whatever. I probably could have done that, it, it, and I just didn't. So that's just me. You guys can, you know, for me it was worth it just to have it done. I. I went. I dropped uh, it off. Uh, I wouldn't fault you because I mean, it, it, it's something you live with. It's something you need to have, and it's like your car. You, yeah, I can go oh, change, take the time, and spend a couple hours to change out the brakes on the car, but I can just as easily take it in to have it done by a dealer. And guess what? They're going to be standing behind it. If something goes wrong, they screw up. They have to deal with it. I don't. Yeah, it's this week. I have titled a dollar short. Uh, because everything I've done has fallen short just a, a little bit. And it's like, oh, why, how come anything can't go right for me? I had visions of 
buying a part like this and just totally whacking my phone in the process, you know, and it was one of those things. It's like, okay, I've had enough this week. I, I dropped it off. There's a Chick-fil-A next door. I walked over there. I had some lunch. I read the newspaper. You know, here's another thing. I was amazingly uh, disoriented when I was at Chick-fil-A without a phone, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. That's when you pull out the, the, on the 520. I should have taken the 520 <laughs> with me. That would have been smart to to spend some time on the Lumia 520. But I, I handed him my phone. This is a little disconcerting. I handed him my phone and I'm like, oh, can I take one of yours? And the guy's like, no. I'm like, what am I going to do? So they had, fortunately, they had this thing called the newspaper. It's, you know, it's, it's like a blog, oh. but it's on paper. Paper? Oh, what, what's yeah. paper? <laughs> exactly. And uh, I read this newspaper while I, I waited for uh, for them to fix it. I went back and they had it done. And You know, it was at the end of the day for me, hey, I, and I, as a home tech listener, I just want to say, you know, if you're having problems with your phone, it does sound like these Galaxy phones are built in a way that you can change out some of these parts now. And maybe the average consumer, the average tech or above average tech guy, uh, Ted uh, being one of them, and John Wills being one too. John told me he did it as well uh, on his Note 3, I think is what he said. Although that's a pretty new phone to be changing out a, uh, you know, a charger on. But um, it's all possible. I just chose not to. But the kits look cool. If you go to Amazon, use our affiliate link, theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon. But it's kind of cool. The kit comes with about three screwdrivers that you need to be able to lift all that stuff off, pull that chart, you know, pull that piece out. The part that he replaced, he he documented on the on our Facebook group. So if you're interested in learning what he did, just head out to facebook.com/group/theaverageguy, or you can go to theaverageguy.tv/facebook and uh, join that group. And it's really kind of cool. I thought, oh, I probably could have done that, but I didn't. So. All right, so that ends the saga. My phone works. It now charges. I'm back to the way it was before, although I, I, I do think I probably put, need to put a plug in there or something so I don't uh, don't set it. I think what happened is I had some water in my car. I'd spilled something, and I set the phone down in that cup holder, and it just soaked up <laughs> right right into it because the rest of the phone was fine. Well, that just means yeah. you need to get a GS5. Yeah, well, maybe under subsidy. Because they're supposed to be water resistant. That would be nice. And maybe I need just a waterproof cover for it. Maybe that would have been the smart thing. Um, to About go $75. <laughs> yeah, another $75, <laughs> right? Another $75. Bucks. Yep. Um, Kyle, real quick, you had uh, in the notes here, you would put a, and I'm, I'm intrigued, you've talked about this, and this is going to kind of be, we're going to shift gears here, a custom a custom RSS feed with XML hosted on a Google Drive. Now, yep. one of the things, the reason I'm asking is because we always talk about MP3 hosting, right? This idea mm -hmm. of being able to, where do you put our MP3s for podcasting and can you create an RSS feed off of this? So walk me through this real quick of, of what you discovered and then I'll, I'll ask some questions. Yeah. So the first, the first part is just the fact that you can host um, websites on Google Drive. Um, and there's a link in the show notes, and if you do a Google search for it, you'll find a ton of articles telling you how to do it. But um, this, there's a super simple Google explanation on their support drive, support topic, where it just says, you know, step one, create a folder, make it public. Step two, upload your HTML, JavaScript, or CSS. Step three, um, open the file and then click the preview button in step four, and then share the URL that it gives you. It's gonna it's gonna go to a, a, a website that says www.googledrive.com/host, and then every person's folder that shared has this big long cryptic key, um, and then you can put and then after that it'll take you to your page, and you can make a uh, if you actually use if you use the word if your first page is index.html, you don't need to add anything after the last slash. Um, I like to not use index because then I can just go to that site and see my root folder of everything that's there, and then I make my main page. I make just make it home.html, um, and so that's that's pretty cool um, that you can do that. And if you look at the the next two links that are in the show notes, um, we'll show you. You know, you can just have. It just shows you it's almost, it's like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know if that looks like an FTP server, but it's just a list of here are the folders that are stored here on the web page, 
Um, and you can see I have in mine hey, I have me, audio let me flip over uh, Cal. Let me flip over so folks can see. What, do you want to uh, put? Do you want me to share my screen? No, I'll do it. There okay. we go. You can talk it through while I uh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me. Okay, put mine in focus. Go ahead. Oh yeah. So um, I have uh, a folder for audio, a folder for CSS for my custom style sheets. I have a folder for images, and I have a folder for RSS that hosts the. Ec RSS feeds are in XML format, and then I have an HTML document, and I have several um, websites. Um, if you go to actually, if you go to bitly.com/kylejwx, I've actually linked all my hosted sites there, so I can get to them easily. Bitly.com/kyle. What was the last part? Jwx. Jwx. And this this link is. This is to one that I took, and this one just defaults to go to index.html, and then you can look through and see. Um, you know, I have a link to the actual site, and then I below it I have the index page, so you can see the structure, essentially the structure that I've created for that website. Um, most of those are for Google Drive. Some of them are for, like, Twitter and stuff like that. But um, And so that the entire web page that Jim's showing there is you know, all the boxes, those are custom style sheet, um, what do they call Pat, like There's like padding and margins and different categories that they put them in. Um, but, but yeah, you can, you can put audio files, you can embed video files, you can use any HTML will work, um, they don't let you do PHP, but HTML, JavaScript, um, and it, they don't list XML as list is working, but it, it works fine. Uh, um, don't blow past that because PHP does not allow you to do WordPress, right? So you can't load a WordPress instance. No, this, this is yeah, it's strictly for static websites. That's right. that's all you're gonna do. Now you can use a, a separate third-party static website generator to throw the files there. Um, well, but but yeah, so it, it's very cool if you just want to get the hang of hand coding your own website and seeing what it will look like. Um, and I like how I, I know, the boxes and stuff helps me keep track of it. That's how it's in, in the CSS document um, for the style sheet on the website. Um, but then basically what I did was I just used, um, let me go back to my links here. Um, I just did some research. Um, W3 Schools is another link in the notes there. Um, and that just teaches you how to do the absolute basics of everything related to any kind of almost any kind of coding, whether it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, XML. Um, and when you're in the XML section, you can learn how to make your own um, your own RSS feed. Um, and if, I don't know, can you show? Can you maybe you can go and click on one of those? If you open it in which one do you want me to click on? Click on uh, I think it's three is the one for RSS. Or podcast RSS. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just click on like any one of those three links. There will do the same thing. So when you open when you click a link in Chrome, it doesn't really it just displays the source code. If you do it in Internet Explorer, it's going to show like an actual Internet Explorer has an actual thing to show um, kind of like it lays out an, H, an, X, uh, mm -hmm. an RSS feed um, but basically um, I, I can copy that just if you wanted to get those podcasts that I uploaded there you could just copy the link right out of that browser and in, import it into your pod catcher of choice um, and it would feed those down um, to you um, yeah and it's just it's just hand coding your your XML document, um, and I just what I did was I just copied. I just went to the W3 schools and I went to their section on XML and RS and then RSS is a type is a custom way of doing or not custom but it RSS is created by an XML file. So I just copied from W3 schools and then I just took out their content and inserted mine and then I made a reference back to the audio file that I uploaded into the folder. Um, so is this long cryptic name, is that the folder name? Yeah, that's the okay. that's the part, that long cryptic part, that's the part that Google Drive does. Um, and that's and any site that you host on Google Drive, that's the part that they do. Um, and do you know if there's any terms of service that you'd be violating when you 
So say you do, you're a podcaster like I am, and I mm -hmm. want to start putting my files out here. Mm -hmm. And you use Google Drive as the host, right? Media yep. host is always the most super expensive part right. of this deal. Right. Do you know? Do you um, know? So I don't, I have not researched that part. Um, my guess my guess is going to be that whether it's Google Drive, Dropbox, SkyDrive, any of those, they they authorize you to use them under normal load. Um, and the only real evidence I have on this is one time I was watching Twitter and I think uh, Paul Thorat tweeted out that he had updated his book and he had the PDF was hosted. He tried it on SkyDrive and on Dropbox um, and so many people clicked on those links that it shut down his links to those. Um, it just it just kind of overwhelmed. They weren't ready for that right. amount. It right. wasn't supported. Um, so I'm guessing I I don't know haven't heard this or tested this or anything. I'm guessing that eventually, if you used it for a large volume, that Google Drive would probably sense that there's too much traffic in it. Mm -hmm. It would either shut itself down gracefully and and just pop up a warning page and say this user has you know, ran 5,000 gigabytes out of his right. server, you know, out of his Google right. Drive this month, you know. So yeah. there's, but um, for what I'm doing, for hosting it for myself, it's perfect because, I mean, as one person, I'm not even going to come close to doing that. Right. Um, and so it, have I kind of explained how that part works? Yeah, or what, no, do, you, do so. you have questions about where I'm going with that? Um, no, I, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's a kind of, it's a, it's kind of, it's a really geeky way of doing it, right? But it does... <laughs> <laughs> allow you no it does allow you some flexibility to use yeah. Google Drive for more than just storage yeah and and I the first like I said the first thing I started doing with Google Drive was just to host a website and see what it looks like and to and to play around with the HTML documents and that stuff and then I thought man I wonder if I can do this and I re you know and I would go to I would go and look at the actual and read the code of the RSS feeds from you know from Jim's site or from you know marketplace or whatever podcast you're listening to you can go and and on their web when it's you know if you go to their website and click on the link that says this is our RSS feed well you can view the source code for that and see how they're doing it and and figure in how to get images and stuff actually if you go to if you're in the XML code for the podcast for the feed there it will um if you go to I think it's the bottom one the Tabor yeah that one if you're in that code, I actually figured out how to add a JPEG so that when you download that one into your phone or whatever, it will, um, that image will show up as the image. So you can you can learn and customize, and pretty much my learning on all this coding is just W3 schools, and you just follow their tutorials and copying what other people have coded on their sites for their XML documents. So, and then the other thing that was I thought was super cool. Um, was uh, on the home server show. One of these guys uh, was. They were. I don't. I didn't. I just ran into this post randomly. I didn't even know anybody else was doing this. But he, uh, Gavin Campbell, um, he figured out a way to write a script that will automatically, when he uploads, a, when he inserts a audio file into a folder, he has it set up so that his script will automatically create the XML entry. Because if you look on what Jim's sharing there. Um, each each thing has it has an item and then it has a title and then link and then description. Those are like the four building blocks you need for each entry that you have. So his automated thing, I don't even know how a script works, um, but his automated thing will when you insert a audio an audio file there, it will create those that. Um, code essentially in the file and then he can just download and he's not even he didn't put his on Google Drive I don't think but he would just and he actually put his music there so that if he he only, I think he can only access it on his Wi-Fi home Wi-Fi but then his music essentially acts like a podcast and will auto sync with his iPhone or any other RSS feeder yeah um, so very I, cool. I thought that was pretty cool. The, yeah, no, the, it's, there's some interesting implications for that, just as you think about it. Hmm. Yeah, so, it would it would be great. Uh, I would think it would be great if uh, you could get around the. I mean, I'd love to see it become a, a place you could do podcasts out of, and Google would say, "Hey, we don't care how much bandwidth you use." 
Yeah. You know. That, and I mean, I don't know if you if you wanna if you could if there's any way to test that if you just wanna. And then they lock up my Google account. Well, and, yeah, you know. create, a, create a separate Google. They give true, you 15 true. gigs for free, and then their storage is pretty cheap. So I don't know if yeah. you can throw it up on Twitter and say everybody hit this file as hard as you can and see yeah. what happens. That would be interesting. Um, see if you can. But lock yeah, that there's um, most most places don't let you host raw HTML files, um, and so that would let me play around with it. And you can you, know, you can I, you can put a video up there and, and embed video in your HTML and embed audio in your HTML. Um, so it's just it's completely raw storage, completely open to whatever you want to stick there. So okay, very cool, good find. That's 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 interesting. I think for for the, the for for those of us who like to code, I'm not one of them. But uh, for one of for those of us who like to get dig in there, and that that might have some interesting implications. So they try to keep that stuff as fairly open as they can. So interesting. All right, good stuff, Kyle. Anything else you want to add on that on that topic? On that one? No, not okay. really. Just in all the links and very ask good. Questions. Hey, quickly, you you had uh, and, and let's do this quick. But you had uh, we, we'd had Amber Gott on a couple weeks back talking about LastPass. In in the pre-show, you had mentioned to me you're like, there when you when you talk about the average consumer, and they think about this having another application to manage all their passwords and spending a buck a month to be able to do it, right? Which is really what you need for if you're going to get it on the phone, you got to pay the twelve dollar price in it. Your kind of thinking is, oof, right? That's just that's still too much for the average consumer. You think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it the the password management and and for most Americans today, I think is just horrible. And I mean, most people come in and upgrade a, an Android phone after two years, and we're like, okay, are you ready to sign in with your Google account? And they're like, what's a Google account? And I'm like, <laughs> have you downloaded any apps? And I'm like, well, if you've downloaded an app, you have a Google account. And they're like, I don't think I have one. I'm like, well, you probably have one. Um, and then I'm like, do you remember the password? No. Can I just create a new one? Okay, they just create a new one. Um, I mean, that happens every day at work. Um, so, and and I think um, you know, if we were, if Christian was here to talk about cybersecurity or something, he would be, he would, I don't know, he would have be flipping out Jumping about jumping out of his skin. Yes, yes. But but here's the thing: the the information that most people want to back up is their their contacts and their pictures. I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to. So I mean I guess there's some privacy concerns there, but overall I mean if if we can find out a way to do that, uh, you know even if you know if their password has to be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, that's not I mean those pictures probably aren't the most we're not talking about the super sensitive you know information that most people you know obviously if you're running doing it your bank account you need to have a better password, but for your backing up your phone and and backing up your computer and stuff. Um, and, and being able to remember a password for that, um, yeah, it's it's pretty frustrating to kind of just work with people on that. And I did see um, Verizon is adding, um, you know, 25 gigabytes of cloud backup is included now with their with their thing, which it's always great if you can tie it to the cell phone subscription because they're paying for that. They already have a password. They're already attached. Or they're already in that system. So if you can say just use that, well then if they switch to a different company, well then what happened to their data? You know, well it's gone. So it's, you know, right. It is um, still kind of messy. Yeah, and it is. Don't uh, let's not cover two, but but um, it, it is cloud. You know, when I I when I was having problems with my phone, I um I, I wiped it out. I thought, hey, maybe it's maybe an update screwed it up, and so I wiped it out and started over. And then it was like, hey, do you want to sign back in? And so I put my Google account in. And man, that has gotten good on these phones, though. Mm -hmm. The backup, I mean, it brought every... Now, it took an hour, and the phone was like, uh, you know, the, the temperature of the sun hot <laughs> while it was doing that. Mm -hmm. But it brought it back. And it brought every, all the apps are back. I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy good. Um, Bill, any suggestions from a password? You got any, you got any opinions on password management for the average guy? Um, I actually been using a uh, application called Keeper on my cell phone, which uh, you enter, enter the passwords, it encrypts them, and it actually can back them up to storage on the internet. 
and if you have you have to pay them like ten bucks a month, ten bucks a year per device. Yeah, and I think that's Kyle's. The average consumer just goes, uh, although they pay a ridiculous amount for that phone. And then they won't pay ten dollars a year to just make sure it's backed up. Yep. Kyle, that's probably yep. a problem. That's probably yep. a problem. Yeah. I mean, yep. it, it, it's a, it's just a simple little manager program, and it's worked f- nice for me for two three years now. So. Okay. Well, what I want to do is throw it out to you guys, you the listener. So we want to engage you a little bit. If you are, uh, and I'm not so interested in backup. We cover a lot of that on Home Server Show stuff. We talked about it. Uh, we talk about kind of backup. Uh, methodologies and stuff there. I'm more interested in password management and what you think of that and what you're doing. And so if you're doing something other than LastPass, I know a lot of us use LastPass uh, to make that work. But if you're using something other than LastPass, maybe you're creative, uh, would you call that in and let me know what you're doing? So call call us, 402-478-8450. The other night it was funny. I was actually at my computer when somebody was calling in and leaving a message and a little thing popped up to tell me a call was coming in. So it was pretty cool. And uh, we're going to take some, I'm going to, you're going to listen to some calls here in just a second, but 402-478-8450. And tell me what you're doing for password management. It just would be good if you maybe you got a scheme. If you've, I'm sure you've heard Christian on this program before. Um, uh, he's got a crazy, he has a crazy methodology in the thing that he does. And I st- I've had him explain it to me like four times. I still don't completely understand it, but um it's all good stuff. So, okay, let's. Um, I told. Uh, I, in fact, Ted is here because Ted was one of the guys that called in. And Ted, I'm going to botch your name, so I'm going to let you introduce it on the, on the uh, the clip that we have there. Uh, and so, um, a couple guys called in this week. I told you guys I would play those calls, and uh, then we'll talk. Uh, we'll kind of come in for landing on this. So let me play these right now. Ted, thanks for calling in, by the way. And here's Ted's message. Hello, Jim. This is Ted Chicados. Um, we had an exchange via Twitter some time ago. I'm the founder of System Admin Day, which is the last Friday of July. I'm an avid listener of um, the Home Server Show and Home Tech. Uh, I'm a binge listener. I uh, subscribe via iTunes, and I have far too many interests and far too many podcasts that I subscribe to. So I collect up um, – about six to eight episodes of uh, the home server show and home tech and then listen to them uh, back to back. Uh, reason for my call is I heard you talking about the uh, Sinclair. I had had one of those and um, I enjoyed uh, hearing you mention the Sinclair mini little uh, computer with the, with the stupid keyboard. I have a funny story that has to do with uh, data recovery over several decades. Back in the mid-80s, when uh, I was getting married, I used a TRS-80 computer to manage a, a database of my tests. Uh, and as the wedding progressed and, and as, we, as the wedding was over, I added additional columns to the database to keep track of gifts. So the data was stored on a cassette tape, and the TRS-80 was long gone. And I had a printout of the, um, you know, the final, the final tally, the final report of uh, our wedding guests. And at my, at my uh, 25th wedding anniversary, I pulled out all of our wedding photo albums, and I had the printout. And in at the 25th wedding anniversary party, somehow or another, the printout got uh, lost, and it was the only copy that I had. And uh, we were quite, um, you know, quite disappointed that we had lost that, that one and only hard copy printout. But I was able to find the cassette tape from the TRS-80. So I found a TRS-80 computer that had a cassette interface. I was able to load the data from the cassette tape that had been sitting in the desk for like 25 years. And then from there, I, was, I figured out how to use the terminal program to spit it out the serial port, and I plugged a cable from the TRS-80 into my Windows speech computer with Office. Um, and I used, um, I think I used Putty and um, was able to transfer the data over the serial port as a CSV file. And then I opened it in um, Excel 2013 
and saved it as an Excel file. So I was able to get my wedding guest list restored from a 25-year-old TRS-80 cassette tape. I was quite proud of myself. So anyway, love you, show and listen to every episode. Thanks very much. Bye. TRS-80 recovery. I don't even know what that is. I, I, that was my first computer. Really? Yeah. And, and Model 3. And you, and you we, kept the data on the cassette tape? No, we actually had two floppy disks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and 48K memory. I've used, the, I've used the floppy disk before, but there's other stuff I don't know. <laughs> I listen to music on, on cassette tapes. <laughs> Well, oh, that, used, that's retro right there. <laughs> yeah, you used to be able to, Kyle, you used to be able to store data on cassette tapes. That's That was the only way that, uh, that's the only way it worked. Hold on, I've got one more of these to play. Ted, thanks for sharing that. That is dynamite. That And it's Putty that he used. I think that's uh, that's what he said. Uh, and so Putty is like a database application that allowed him to go through the serial port, pull that information into Windows, and, uh, and then uh, drop that into Excel. And get that guest list back. I I listened to that a couple times because I edited it a little bit. He uh, if you call and leave a message, so 402-478-8450. It's on the it's it's everywhere at theaverageguy.tv. So if you can't remember it, head out there and get it. But um, as I was listening to it, I just smiled every time. I thought Kyle, as you were talking about hacking on Google Docs, you know, the Google Drive, and you're doing this stuff. Uh, this was a retro hack like uh, like I haven't heard in in a while. So. Ted, nice work, and I know um, uh, he said he didn't even have the cable. I had to make he had to make the cassette cable <laughs> to make it work into the serial port. That is dynamite. Yeah, yeah. So Pat Putty's a terminal program. It's um, yeah, yeah. So awesome, awesome stuff, and uh, and that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for for you guys to call in. It's good. You know, Kyle, you're not our demographic, by the way, but so thanks for hanging out with us. You know, it's more like Bill and I, and we have <laughs> these old stories uh, to tell. And so, but Kyle, I appreciate you hanging out with us. I've got one more that I want to play uh, this week. We got a note from, um, well, he'll tell you here. No, he actually he doesn't. I don't know who this is from, so you'll have to you'll have to send it in. I didn't get enough information. I guess I could have texted him back and asked his name. But uh, he's an avid listener as well, and he'll probably let me know. But Christian and I on Cyber Frontiers, so if you haven't listened to that yet, it's hard not to. It's in the feed. I kind of force you to listen to it <laughs> if you're listening to the home tech feed. Uh, but Christian and I have been doing Cyber Frontiers, and we talked about honeypots uh, the other day, and uh, and this is what the caller had to say. Hey, guys. Just heard the uh, latest episode of Cyber Frontiers uh, talking about the data breach at uh, UND and all that other stuff. The thing that... Uh, really picking my interest was the uh, do-it-yourself uh, honeypot at home and whether or not, you know, you guys are saying whether or not that's even practical or, uh, you know, should the home user even be interested in that. Um, and I'd have to say that that's something I would really be interested in, you know, in doing. Uh, I'd actually never considered that beforehand. I actually should be. Uh, for the more advanced users who might be running uh, servers at home, whether it's a Windows Home server or it's a Linux box, you know, serving up files, you know, a free NAS device, anything like that. Those devices can be, you know, if if, if someone goes and breaks into your network and, you know, gets into those devices, <laughs> they could be using your own gear to serve up stuff, and then next thing you know, you got the cops, you know, breaking down your door because you're serving up, you know, God forbid what. You know, so, the, you know, I would be rather interested in hearing on, you know, a do-it-yourself uh uh, honeypots at home, you know, or at least kind of your guys' take on it, you know. That's something that I'm actually going to be working into now. And uh, I don't know, I might actually be implementing that soon, considering that I've got a home server. Uh, what do you call it? I've got a couple of Raspberry Pis running off uh, side servers, you know, that are connected out to the Internet. Um, you know, and then you have all these connected uh, devices at home, the Internet of Things, and, you know, hearing in the past of uh, refrigerators serving uh, what do you call email, spam emails. Yeah. I think uh, as, as we become more and more connected at home and our devices become more <laughs> advanced, we need to really pay attention to what they're doing and, you know, and be able to, you know, and proactively protect ourselves from anything that, you know, might happen to them. So just, you know, wanted to thank you guys for the good episode. Um, 
thank you for uh, bringing up stuff that I um, never really considered in the past. And <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got some research to do, and uh, I just want to hear your guys' take on it. All right, keep up the good work. All right, and so if that was your message, I didn't get any information on who you were. If you do call me, leave your um, – tell me your name so we, we can track you back down, but I appreciate that call. Uh, honey pots were something we talked about on uh, on Cyber Frontiers. Two, head out to theaverageguy.tv and just type in CF002, and that will get you right there in the search um, if you want to find that. Um, uh, kind of an interesting topic, and uh, we won't necessarily rehash that here. Um, I will make sure we play this on Cyber Frontiers as well. Christian will love that, but uh, I wanted to put that into this group. That's the kind of information we talk about on Cyber Frontiers. It's really turning out to be a pretty cool podcast. Christian's got some guys lined up and uh, some news even on what's going on there in the University of Maryland, some things he can and can't say. So we have another episode coming up either tomorrow night or next Friday. I think we're going to do it next Friday. He's on spring break, and we'll catch him in Buffalo and, uh, and get that done as well. I want to remind you, Ted, also, he's the founder of System Admin Appreciation Day. That's July 22nd, 20, or I'm sorry, July 25th, 2014. It's the last, I think it's the last Friday of every, the last Friday in July every year. Uh, that's a recognized day, and it's a good time to bring uh, uh, maybe some Mountain Dew and some pizza to your sister, system admin on that day, right? Uh, and and uh, so you can celebrate it that way. Head out to sysadminday.com. There's a lot of information out there. I want to thank Ted for calling in and uh, being a part of uh, of the show. It's just great to get two of those um, two of those messages in a week. And yeah, I could have spread them out over the last couple weeks, but I, that's not me. I'm just gonna play them. So. Guys, uh, Kyle or Bill, any comments on uh, on the calls or, or anything you wanted to add before we kind of run into post-show? Mm, nope. So Bill's good, Kyle? You're good? You're muted, my friend. <laughs> yep, but I'm good, so. All right. <laughs> so, sounds good. I was reading your lips that way, but we'll, we will remind folks, we'll stay around for some post-show. I get to do a live, I do some live interviews tonight out of Singapore at 1030 Central, so. I can't stay around too long because I got to start firing up those engines. But uh, for the for the Gallup podcast that I do, which is kind of fun, that continues to go uh, very very well. Coaching.gallup.com. If you want to see what I do for my day job or one of the side jobs, that's just probably a better way of saying it. One of the side jobs that I do for my day job. Uh, head out to Coaching.gallup.com, and if you have any questions about that, of course you can always contact me. We're out here Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. Just about every week, and I was telling the guys we got some cool stuff coming up here, uh, including uh, if you Google on air player and uh, find them on Facebook, they got some interesting things going on. I have their, I have one of their chief guys coming out to talk about what they're doing. And then Rennie found this company called Mover.io, M-O-V-E-R.io. They'll move up to 10 gig of data around for you between your. Um, between your cloud accounts and that data never hits your local ISP, which in some countries where you have a cap, that's pretty important. And there's some things that they do with that. And by the way, if you use copy as one of the destinations, it's free. You don't get charged for that. So that's uh, uh, Eric Warnke from Mover.io. He is going to be on, on March 27th on Air Player. Daniel Voki from On Air Player will be on March 20th. These are all 2014 dates. Next week, special guest, uh, a, a, a guy that I met at a conference, Mike, uh, and I always, I have Binko because that's what he goes by, but uh, he'll be on the show to talk about a little about Windows Phone development and some of those other uh, pieces. He's kind of a, a developer, and I, I wanted to get it. He was a super interesting guy, so I'm going to have him on for the first 30 minutes of the show next week, and we'll talk about that as well as all the other things that we talk about here on Home Tech, and uh, I want to thank Bill. Uh, Bill Rockhold and uh, Kyle Wilcox for coming out tonight. Bill, thanks for being a recipient of the scholarship fund and doing a nice job on the review and the post. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Kyle, always great to have you. We always have to kind of work this around your schedule. Thursday nights are not always open, so I th thanks for being around and uh, watch. Uh, st send me your email ad or send me your uh, mailing address. We're going to get a ATR2100 out to you in the mail. So I right. want to have you on. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming around tonight, guys. Stay around for the post show. We'll be back next Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Good night, everybody. <laughs>